Here's what happened. This is a real gun, and I know how to use it. Don't want to do this. No, Lady. it's a real gun, no! No, I don't want to work. No, I do! No, 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 Let's get out of here! Wait, 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 we gotta do the thing. What thing? The thing, the painting! Okay, that's good enough, let's go! So, it's uh, just been me and my housekeeper, Gladys. That's why I'm here. Sunday night, someone broke in. I guess Gladys woke up. Um, there must have been a fight. And, um, he killed her. Oh, oh my God. Are you okay? No, I, I wasn't home. Adrian, I'm the only family Gladys had. I just want justice for her. I. I want to make sure that the best people are working on this. And I, I've been asking around, and everyone says you're a genius. But, of course, I already knew that. Adrian um, helped me out of a jam when we were kids. Oh. About um, what, 30 years ago. April 12, 1972. You remember? I only remember the date and what everybody wore, and what everybody said, and what everybody did. Strange. Fingerprints, but no palm prints. There were two of them. The housekeeper surprised them. It was a struggle. She pushes the alarm. She hits her head and falls here. This painting, is it valuable? Not really, except to me. It's my great-grandmother. Why would someone do something like that? Did you have spray paint in the house? No. So they must have brought it with them. Thank you. This is the housekeeper's blood. They defaced the painting after they killed her, after the alarm sounded. They risked everything. They risked life in prison to deface your great-grandmother. Officer, I'm Adrian Monk. I want you to put out an APB on two homicide suspects that just ran out of here. Names are Travis Baptiste and his brother George. Got it? Yes. Yeah. Mike, look, he left his wallet. 109 Vinton Street, Sherry's house. In her here. Somebody must have hired them. What? Why are you making that face? Why are you smiling? Stop it! Kid, you all right? Huh? Adrian, are you okay? I'll be scarred for life. Psychologically. Nah, he'll get over it. What did he say? He said he solved the case. He knows how Leo did it. <laughs> I know. I gotta go. Whatever it is, I didn't do it. 
Sherry, Captain, what's going on? Oh, good. <laughs> you fixed it. It's as good as new. Sir, sir, please don't touch that. That's evidence. Well, evidence of what? Mr. Norfleet, you're under arrest for the murder of Gladys Aquino, your wife's housekeeper. Son, this would be a lot easier on everyone if you just confess. I know you took the money. That's crazy. It was in her locker. Nobody else could have opened it. The cash box was in her locker because you put it there. And I know how you did it. Here's what happened. You hired two men, Travis Baptiste and his brother, to break in to Sherry's house. Ridiculous. We found this in Travis's wallet. Anyone could have written that. It's true. The letters are printed. There's nothing special about them. But look at the house number. Look at the zero. There's a little line through it. I noticed something yesterday when you were stuffing me into my locker, which, by the way, wasn't very cool. My lock was set to zero. I remember that Sherry always set her lock to zero as well. But the day before, when Principal Thicket found the cash box, her lock was not set to zero. This was all about the zeros. You don't see a zero written like this very often, but I saw four of them the day before. When you were writing Sherry's alimony check. I've seen other people write zeros like that. True, but how many of them also know the floor plan to your wife's house? Here's what happened. When you pretended to help her with her books, you pocketed her lock and replaced it with yours. It was a perfect plan. You took out the money. Then, when nobody was watching, you came back and planted the cash box. Then you put her lock back on the locker. Why would I hire somebody to break into her house? There's nothing in there that I want. Ah, yes. The motive. I knew it had something to do with this painting, but I just couldn't figure out what. Then I remembered how you resented paying all that alimony. I believe you called it your monthly pound of flesh. Her alimony? You'd be paying her alimony forever unless she got remarried. This wasn't about stealing anything or hurting anybody. This was about them. You were fixing them up. He knew about Jimmy. I talked about him all the time. You tracked him down, and you got lucky. He was single and still living right here in the city. But you had a problem. How were you going to get them together? You couldn't just call her. You and Sherry were barely speaking, and she would have resented any suggestion you made. So you played Cupid. You hired Travis and his brother to break into her house and to deface the painting, a painting she loved, one you knew she would want restored. You were betting that eventually she'd bring it to James. He is the best art restorer in the city. They would discover that they still had feelings for each other. And you were right. Nice story. You can't prove any of it. You can't prove any of this. Are you going to believe Adrian Monk? He's a freak. You can ask anybody. Let's empty out all your pockets. Come on. That's my money. Travis and George were just picked up this morning in Las Vegas. They will be here tomorrow. And these boys are going to talk. I can promise you that. Their fingerprints were all over that room. This money's from the bake sale. That's my handwriting. I wrote good luck next to honest Abe Lincoln. Why don't you and I have a little talk in my office? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Nobody was supposed to get hurt. What was Gladys doing there? It was supposed to be her day off. Lieutenant Disher, book it. The crazy thing is, it worked. Congratulations, darling. <laughs> Thank you. You're amazing. You're still amazing. It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere No one seems to care
Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? It's Jungle Dog.